Glory. God is good and faithful. Amen. You know, you're not going to be just hauling um, uh, stuff. God showed me you're going to be hauling people. You're going to, God's going to, those that have been rescued, he's going to use you to drive out. So just be prepared. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How many, how many times you run into somebody that says they're a believer and you know they're really not? How many times you run into somebody that says they're a Christian and you know they're really not? How do you know them? Because you know them by their fruit. Amen? And what exposes them is their desire. Their heart. Because the heart is the core of all desire. Amen? What's happening right now is... It's amazing how history repeats itself in multiple ways. And when you begin to think about the disciples, when Jesus showed up and he said, listen, he didn't share with them, believe me. He said, follow me. Why? Because he chose them. They had a choice either drop what they were doing and follow or not. Those are called true disciples. See, they were in a life, and when the Lord showed up and gave them the opportunity to follow them, they said, they dropped everything according to the world's way, and they followed. That is a true disciple. And there's a difference between true disciples and those who proclaim to be disciples. Remember, the word says that many false prophets will come. In other words, many false prophets. Disciples will come false pro in the area of false teachers, false doctrines, self-promoters of their positions. I'll never forget, I was working at a job one day and doing some work somewhere, and there was a pastor there, and I kept hearing him on the phone. And he says, yeah, I'm leaving this church, I'm looking for more money. I thought, man, that grieved me. Grieve me. And I said, Lord, what's up? He says, he don't know me. He's a hireling. Hireling. I thought, man, that just, it destroyed me. I was like so grieved in my spirit. I, did, I couldn't understand that someone could, my thought was, how can you place Papa or somebody in that position and, and, and they're only there for money? And he said, I didn't place them in that position. They placed themselves there. See, so what's, what's happening right now is there's a difference between one who's a true disciple one who's a fake disciple. And God is raising up and pulling out true disciples. True disciples. Real disciples. So we have to parallel ourselves in the time when Jesus called those disciples out. They didn't have a Bible. They followed the Lord. And when the Lord departed, they followed the Spirit. And they began to write down testimonies of everything that was happening because of their following the Spirit. They laid down everything. They said, Lord, we've given up everything. He said, listen, your treasures are in heaven. See, a true disciple is not looking for treasures here. He's looking for them in heaven. He knows they're awaiting him. Amen? In John chapter 6. Many will come in my name. Hallelujah. True disciples. A disciple that's one is being trained or learning from. In fact, the one word in the word disciple is discipline. It's one who's disciplined, consistent, unwavering. Non-compromising. In John 6, 53. 
Let's speak it. Then Jesus said to the Moses, surely I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. In other words, it's his words. And my blood is drink indeed, which is his spirit. He who eats of my words and drinks of my spirit abides in me, and I in him. Does everybody understand that? Anybody understand it? Good. Praise God. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. Now, that's phenomenal. He who feeds on me. See, one of the things the enemy likes to do is bring deceptive food. He likes to distract. So you be, people begin to feed and get confidence and self-encouragement and all the other things except for the Lord. They become men-pleasers instead of God-pleasers. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in a synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. He, and he said, therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me except unless it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the, to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter, here comes Simon again. Bold Simon. <laughs> Crazy Simon. Here comes second revelation for Simon. But Simon Peter answered, answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Good revelation. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ. Again, you're the anointed one and the anointing and the son of the living God. Jesus answered them, did I not choose you? The twelve and one of you is the devil. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. See, true disciples eat his word and drink his spirit. They eat his word and drink his spirit. That's why Jesus calls them true worshipers. Again, one of the foundations of discipleship is to learn how to worship and access God's presence. And John 4. And I believe that's one of the things that really lack a lot. People would just come to sing to feel good instead of to worship. We're not singing for us. We're ministering to the Lord. Because many have never fulfilled their priesthood. They try to skip, skip their priesthood. And you can't. You'll never become a warrior unless you maintain fulfilling your priesthood as someone that ministers to the Lord. Stop looking for your miracle. Worship Him. Stop looking for your feeling. Worship Him. Stop looking for what He's got for you. Worship Him. If you'll get your eyes off of yourself and on Him, now you begin to minister to Him. Because what you're looking to do is to fulfill Him, not you. There's a difference. That's a true disciple. What is the formula? Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Jesus doesn't give until someone sows. Amen? Oh, 
Oh, hallelujah. And John 4, 21. And Jesus said to the woman, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither at this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation of the, is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit. There's a difference. And truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. That means breath. Say it with me. True, spirit means breath. Does everybody understand it? See, there's a lot of people say, well, I worship the Lord all the time. I worship with my labor. I worship, listen, man, sweet, but not right. True worship is breath. Does everybody get it? It's breath. Why well, worship the Lord of my offerings and my tithe? No, you worship him with your mouth. That's true worship. Everything else is your offering. Amen? Does everybody, everybody say, oh man, I worship the Lord all the time, even when I'm not doing nothing. Well, who told you that, homie? If you ain't doing nothing, you ain't worshiping the Lord. Worship has to do with movement, presence, exaltation. That is called worship. That is worship. And you are looking to bless him, to please him, and to fulfill him. Not us. That's a true worshiper. Amen? You're not looking for nothing. You don't come into God's presence to see what you can get. I can guarantee you, you will always leave with something. If you come and minister to him. Because he knows exactly what you need. That's why the word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things will be added. Well, where is the kingdom of God? It's in the spirit. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? True disciple is a true worshiper. They follow the presence. They follow his presence. In 1 Kings 19. True disciples. First Kings nineteen fifteen. Hallelujah. Everybody there? <clears throat> Verse 15. Let's speak it. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of D Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king of Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Neshma, Nemesh, as king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of, the A of Abel Maloah. You shall anoint as prophet in your place. And it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu, will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha, will kill. Again, uh, now you got to look at something here. He's anointing them to be destroyers of wickedness. These are true disciples. We hate evil, and we pursue our enemies to destroy them. Does everybody get it? And verse 18, Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed, and from there, and found Elijah, the son of Japhat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, 
and he was with the twelve. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. In other words, you are called. You've been invited. Now you got to remember, to have this equipment for plowing and 12 oxen, he was wealthy. It was a family business. And, he, and so what happened is he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow. Well, the prophet rebuked him. He, in other words, you want this anointing? You better destroy everything of your past. And he said to him, go back again for what I have, have I done to you. This is a true disciple. So Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people. And they ate. And then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Now you got to remember, you're talking about the man of God that got anointed. Amen? Remember John the Baptist was in the spirit of Elijah. He was anointed. This was God's presence, his power, truth, and glory all over this man. He was a representation of Christ Jesus himself. And this was a prerequisite for each and every one of us. Because many times we've been called and rejected. Or we've been called and haven't burned all the bridges from our past yet. We're still relying on talents, abilities. We're still going to have false hopes in our past and not allowing God to take care of it. Still hoping for relationship restores, all kinds of things. That's wrong. It's wrong. Your hope is only to be in Him, only in Him. That's it. That's a true disciple. Why? Because it says if we labor in vain, Amen? Only the Lord can build the house or we labor in vain. But my hope is in this. No! Your hope should be in nothing but Him. That's it. Nothing. Does everybody understand it? He's going to make the way, not us. When we make the way, it becomes trouble. All the time. All the time. And then what happens is we have false hopes. And when a false hope is there, it, it brings a flawed perception of things. And then once the enemy knows that there's a false hope there, he begins to bring flawed doctrine. And now you're assuming all kinds of things. Now you become granolaized. Because now you've got all of these hopes and all these assumptions. And you're totally out of God's timeline and into the flesh or soul. Everybody okay? True disciples burn all bridges to the past and follow the anointing of God. Everything is about the anointing. His eternal power, presence, and truth. Is it mine? Luke 14. True disciples. A true disciple is consistent and alert, able to discern. Carries the wisdom from above and nullifies the wisdom of the earth, but uses it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Luke 14, is everybody there? You know, a true disciple holds to the word, his words. If that the true disciple says something, that means he does it. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you say something and things happen. And you just can't help it. You're on your way somewhere and you get in a car accident. Hello, you can't make it on time. Amen. Something happens. But a true disciple is always true to his words. Always. Not a gossiper. That's not a true disciple. 
doesn't hold offense, forgives. These are true disciples. These are what Jesus looked for. True disciples. A heart that's after him. Hands that are clean. A heart that's pure. Not self-centered. But kingdom-centered on everything they do. This is a true disciple. Luke 14, 25. Hallelujah. Let's read it. Now great multitudes went with him and he turned and said to them all, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That is a heck of a requirement. That means that person is willing to leave everything to go follow the Lord. If the Lord tells you to do that, to leave, to go somewhere, you follow the Lord. In other words, you're no longer a man pleaser, you're a God pleaser. Does everybody understand? And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he, is, <laughs> whether he has enough to finish it or enough endurance? Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see him begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able to, with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks con conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all. Forsake all. That he has cannot be my disciple. In other words, you know that you don't own anything. You're just a steward of everything. Everything we have, we are stewards of. We don't own anything. You know, many times we say, oh, yeah, that's my car, that's his, but it's really not our car. Your heart should always know that it's his. Nothing and I, nothing you and I own is ours. And it should always be ready to give whatever he wants to give away. Because it's not ours. That's a true disciple. Is everybody Okay. Verse 34, salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how should it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Forsake all at any moment. At any moment. First John chapter 2 true disciple. A true disciple is willing to go the extra mile. Amen? Go the extra mile. First John chapter 2. Verse 26. Is everybody there? First John 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 26. Let's speak it together. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not to be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he's righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. A true disciple is taught by the anointing. And abides in the anointed one and his anointing. This is the difference between those who call themselves believers and Christians. A disciple is led by the anointing. 
Does everybody get it? Just like the original state. They were not led by the letter, they were led by the anointing. They followed the anointing. Does everybody get that? That's different. Why? Because we do what he says. See, people can do what the word of God says, but without the anointing, it's done out of God's time. Amen? We're to do what he says in everything. That's why the anointing, he will teach you to know his voice. He will teach you to know his unction. He will teach you to know his leading. That's why the Holy Spirit was left for me and you. The anointing. Everything revolves around the anointing. In 2 Corinthians 3. 2 Corinthians 3. And you know what? You know when, it's not being, when you're not being ministered by the anointing. You know when you're not being taught by the anointing. You know it. Because if the anointing's not there, it's not penetrating. It's just words. Unless your heart's hard and you can't receive anything. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 1. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some other, others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by who? Oh, man, they'll know whether you're a disciple of Jesus or not. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ. In other words, you are an epistle of the anointed one. Ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God. Not that, our sufficient, not that we are sufficient of ourselves or think of anything as being sufficient from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who has also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives woe. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. See, a true disciple and our epistles of Christ taught and engraved by the anointing that represents Christ's integrity as a life-giving Spirit. Ministers of the Spirit, not the letter. This is where disciples are different than what you just call Christians or believers. A disciple, I want to say, is a more high level because a true disciple is a Christian. But unfortunately, people have used that label as Christians, but they're not disciples. So it brings a false integrity there. It brings a false label. Hallelujah. Matthew 25. True disciples. In verse 1, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, five foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Why? They never crossed over. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered and said, Heck no, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy your own. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready, everyone say ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. In other words, those that were ready, they were positioned. They were disciples. See, disciples are going to be allowed in. D 
disciples, the ones that deny themselves, pick up the cross, and follow. Though it's a disciple. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said to them, Surely I say, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. True disciples, as a carrier of wisdom and discernment that associates with seek, seekers and lovers of God's presence. They discern someone who's a seeker of God's presence, who's a lover of God's presence. In other words, you'll know them by their heart, their desires. What's, their, what's the most thing when you run into someone? Where are they at? After you get to talk to them for a while. What's the glorification? Their job, their abilities, their talents? Or their relationship with the Lord? 2 Corinthians 4. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, do not, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. In other words, exposed them. Not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. It's a message of truth. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe or follow, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. Wow. See, in this, a true disciple will recognize the blinding power of evil and the attacks of distraction, but continues to carry the message of escape to those who have been bound, no matter what. They recognize that. See, you and I are to recognize those who are blind. That's discerning. That's called discerning of spirit. They're blind. You know it. You see it. You sense it. Why? Because you're a true disciple that walks in freedom. See, if you're truly walking in freedom, you can discern bondage. But if you're walking in bondage, you can't discern it. You'll be easily deceived. Amen? Whose minds the God of this age has blinded them who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the anointing, who is the image of God should shine on them. For we did not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your bondservants for Christ's sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness and has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. <laughs> we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who has raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that Christ, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Hmm. See, for me and you, we are to acknowledge the blinding power of evil and the attacks of, dis of distraction. That's a true disciple. We continue as carriers of the message of escape from the bondage of the world and the spirit, the spirit of truth. Always ready to sacrifice self for the movement of his will. Oh. Always willing to sacrifice yourself for the movement of his will. See, even the disciples knew what was coming. The Spirit let them know. 
but he did not tell him not to go. Did everybody understand? See, he prepared them for the attacks, for the beatings, for the rejections. He prepared them. He told them this is what was going to happen. Even Jesus knew what was going to happen to him, didn't he? But he still went. Because he wasn't about his business, personal, self-centered business. We are always to be about the Father's business. That's what this is about. That's a true disciple, always discerning what the Father's business is compared to our business. Amen? So many times we compromise ourselves. Well, I can turn this into the Father's business, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. People go out and spend money on things to try and proclaim us for the Father's business when it's really a self-motive. Does everybody understand? This is where you and I got to discern these things. We, if you're we are really a true disciple of Jesus Christ, it is no longer you that live. It's him that lives. And you're willing to sacrifice everything for the will of the movement of his will, no matter what it is. <laughs> My, uh, you know, I, I hate long flights. I mean, I just hate long flights, man. My wife will testify again with that. I mean, where were we coming from, Israel or somewhere? I think we were coming from Israel. Man, we were on that flight for almost 12 hours, whatever it was. Oh, I can't sit for 12 hours like that. You have to knock me out. I can do all things for Christ who strengthens me, but I couldn't at this time. Well, the problem was is I had my wife leaning against the window, and she's over there... And, and I'm in the middle, and there's this little girl on the right side of me. Man, she's all curled up in the seat sleeping. I got no room. I'm trying to sleep. I'm, you know, you can't sleep sitting up. I'm sorry. You're trying to avoid knocking over this. And then if I put my head on my wife, she's like, oh. I didn't want to wake her up. Man, you know, about eight and a half hours into this flight, I was about ready to pull this little girl out of her seat, <laughs> put her next to my wife hour? My wife said an hour anyways. I don't, no, it was longer then. So anyways, so I, I just hate long flights. I mean, I went to Cambodia, and I hated that long flight. It took me three days to recover. Sheesh. You know, I couldn't, I just transport me. Dad, just send me. I'll go there. But please don't put me on a plane again. So I was just discussing this again. We were talking about this, and I was telling my wife, man, you know, we, I mean, we, this was a few couple weeks ago. What, honey? Oh, yeah. I, I was testifying about someone. We were, my wife was explaining something. So somebody was there, and I was telling about how I hate long flights and whatever, and I'm not going, ever going on another flight and so forth. I get a call the next day and says, would you mind going to Africa with me? I'm like, oh, God, you're killing me. I said, only if the Lord wills. So I'm still waiting. But you know, you got to be willing to do whatever it takes. Amen? I think God made medication for flights that long. <laughs> Got me all away. <laughs> yeah, I'm going first class. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyways, God's got a plan. <laughs> but we must be willing to sacrifice ourselves for the movement of his will. That's why we have a saying here, it's a good day to die. Glory. 1 Corinthians 4. Yes, my wife was roaring when she found that out. Uh-huh. See? Don't say you're not going to do something when God is going to do it. First Corinthians 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let a man so consider us as servants of the anointing and stewards of the mysteries of God. In other words, revelations. See, this is a true disciple. 
Moreover, it is required in stewardship that one be found what? Faithful. That's someone full of faith. Faithful is full of faith. But with me, it's very, it is a very small thing that I should even be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the what? The Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. We are servants of the, to the anointing and teachers of the mysteries or revelations of Christ Jesus. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, A true disciple. Hallelujah. And when I got that call, I said, man, you got the wrong number. <laughs> but I thought the first thing that came to be, not my will, but your will. Yeah, hallelujah. Let's speak. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Every disciple should be a teacher. Amen? Should be a teacher. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this world, life, or this world, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. A hardworking farmer must be first to partake of crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal life or eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remember them, all these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a work who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Wow. A true disciple is strong in maintaining a plan of escape and a fighter to keep it activated. I'm going to say that again. A true disciple, a disciple is strong in maintaining the plan of escape and a fighter to keep it activated. His discerning establishes boundaries of influence against the emotional foolishness now, there's a true disciple establishes boundaries of foolishness. It's emotional foolishness. He knows. He has strong boundaries of the influence against the emotional foolishness of offense, gossip, unforgiveness, grudges, bitterness, and self control of pride. That's a true disciple. Quick to forgive doesn't hold grudges. Amen? Doesn't manipulate to get things done. Is honest in all things. Honesty is a priority as a true disciple. Don't fool yourself. Amen? 
Romans 8, verse 9. Romans 8, verse 9. It says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. That means there's a level of filling of the spirit. Why? Because when there's a leveling of the filling of the spirit, it has dominion over things. If there's not a level of the filling of the spirit, then the flesh has dominion. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit, by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, known as disciples. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Again, there is a level of God's presence that must be reached to overcome any kind of influence of the flesh or the soul. The reason why people are led to make emotional decisions is because they're not filled enough with the spirit of God. A true disciple knows these things. Knows these things. Practices these things. Is discerning of these things. Because we live for him and not for us. So we do everything that we can to protect the anointing in us. And that we carry. So the enemy doesn't come and steal anything from us. That's why we pursue our enemies also. In 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. In verse 1, let's speak it together, please. Is everybody there? Beloved, don't believe every Christian. <laughs> Or every believer. <laughs> or every spirit. <laughs> but test the spirits. Test them whether they are of God or not. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Proclaiming to be Christians and believers. By this you know them by the spirit of God. Even every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist which we have heard was coming and is now already in the world. How many of you know demons lie? Hello. They lie. Do you understand that? They lie. Why? Because they're under the father of lies. Doesn't he not come as an angel of light? Doesn't he proclaim to be a Christian? He'll tell you everything according to the word of God to get you to believe that he's a believer. But he lies. Does everybody get it? So we can't just go by what someone says. 
we discern by their desires and their fruits. By the quickening in you, by the Spirit of God. He'll tell you that person's lying or not. For his divine order. He'll tell you. But that's why it's so important to be filled with the Spirit of God. So that the mind of God will have dominion over your mind. Verse 4. You are of God, little children. And, has, and, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of what? Truth, which is the spirit of the anointing, the, the anointing of Christ. And the spirit of error, which is the spirit of deception. Beloved, let us love one another, for the love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And in this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. I'm going to say it again, that we might live through him, that we might live through him, not through us, not through self but to the new creation. True disciples test all things to see if they align with the word of God and the timing of God. The word of God and the timing of God and the anointing of Christ. Why? Because the spirit of truth is the anointing of Christ. And I close at Matthew 28. True disciples. Hallelujah. Verse 16. 28, 16. And the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Discipleship is to be a disciple. Amen? That's important. That's, that's God's calling for each and every one. That as a disciple, we are able to disciple someone else. We're able to teach them. But we can't give what we don't have. That's why we must maintain it. That's why we must stay connected. And that's why we must be able to willing to sacrifice everything for the movement of His will. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask that you seal this revelation that you have taught us by the anointing this morning so that we may be about your business in true spirit and in power with no hesitation, but total glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.